Ask the Messengers TV show is a TV show that educates, informs, and entertains our viewers on public health issues such as mental illness, suicide, addiction, illness and disease, COVID-19 relief, crime, domestic violence, homelessness, human trafficking, employment opportunities, health care, and more. And now, Ask the Messengers. Today on Ask the Messengers, in honor of Black History Month, our field reporter, Shea Monet, talks to Danielle and Herb Sanders, owners of The Soul on Ice, located on the Avenue of Fashion in Detroit. Plus, she heads over to the Hair Wars U.S. Tour studio and catches up with David, Hump the Grinder Humphreys, the founder and producer of this iconic hair show that has been bringing fantasy hair to stages and television shows all around the world. Also, our production assistant, Jacinta Siobhan, is hanging out in downtown Detroit, asking a few people, what does Black History Month mean to them? Ask the Messengers begins now. This week in Black History, February 15, 1926, the Ossian Sweet Trials. Dr. Ossian Sweet, an African-American physician, became a symbol of racial injustice in the 1920s. In 1925, Sweet and his family moved into a predominantly white neighborhood in Detroit, Michigan, sparking racial tension. When a mob gathered outside of his home, shots were fired from inside and outside, resulting in the death of one person. Sweet. His wife, his brother, and nine friends were arrested and charged with murder. This trial gained national attention and was supported by the NAACP and prominent figures like Clarence Darrow. The case ended in a mistrial, and the Sweet family and their friends were later acquitted. This landmark case highlighted the struggles of African Americans facing discrimination and violence in northern cities during the Great Migration. Tell us your names and a little bit about your business. Hi, my name is Danielle Sanders, and I'm the co-owner of Soul on Ice at 8867 Livernois. I'm Herb Sanders, and I am the other co-owner of Soul on Ice. Um, you asked something about the business? Yes. We've been open now for a little over a year. Uh, when we opened Soul on Ice, we had the vision of creating a hotel lobby bar in the middle of the city. Um, so we have an intimate atmosphere. Mm -hmm. um, we have small bites on our menus and we have uh, cocktails to die for. <laughs> now let me tell me, look, when I walk inside of here, now I'm looking at the ambiance. I don't feel like I am on Livernoy. I come inside of here and I'm like, I'm in another place. It's another destination. <laughs> what made you guys open up this business on Livernoy? Why not? She said why? <laughs> say why not because the city of Detroit it's we have to start connecting the dots mm -hmm. on Livernois on the far northern end you have the Avenue of Fashion on the southern end you have Mexican Village why are we not connecting the dots and we have been pioneers in many things so when this opportunity came up, uh, upon us why not here people deserve it I feel like you know a lot of people are like we're going to go downtown. That's the easy part, right? Mm -hmm. We're going to go to the Avenue of Fashion. That's the easy part, right? You guys kind of are like bridging the gap. It's pretty amazing. Tell me something about like the milestones you kind of faced opening this business because right here, this is different. There's nothing else around here. Right. Well, obviously, um, there was some trepidation on the part of some individuals. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. However, um, we've been able to host events from everyone to uh, from the mayor's office to judges to individuals in the neighborhood and the community the neighborhood community organization uh, birthday celebrations for people who live around here mm -hmm. so um, we've been able to cater to uh, all genres mm -hmm. and um, we find that to be very rewarding to us mm -hmm. Um, and we've been open a year and the word is still getting out. People are learning about us. I love it. I love it. We're bringing Detroit together. I mean, just coming in here, it just gives you a different, even the bathroom is like, oh, 
let me tell you, I got to the gold handle and was like, huh? Very <laughs> it is very important. If if somebody wanted to do what you guys are doing, they want to give back to the community too. They want to put their business like here. How? What kind of advice would you give them? My advice would be to do your research and know what your vision is and stick to that vision. You know, as Herb mentioned, we had some naysayers or doubters. Mm -hmm. However, we believe that Detroiters should have it all wherever we should not have to go downtown or in specific areas right. why can't we have this right here and we don't feel like we have any competition so our, <laughs> Look, <laughs> there is <isn't. laughs> our thing is stick with your vision have your game plan set your budget and have fun with it i think that was the most important thing when we were first doing this one thing i told her i said it has to be fun so so far over this year it's been a great time and we've really enjoyed it and you talk to me about budget the advice that you would give people if somebody wants to do this like how did you get started like your history was it like difficult financially to do this you guys tell me a little bit about that sure um i'm an attorney danielle's a property manager so those skills helped us in developing um this venture however as we got into it we learned that there were some things we simply didn't know mm -hmm. and uh, an individual who wants to take this leap has to be willing to uh, look for and retain the appropriate consultants to help get them uh, through this uh, environment of licensing and regulations yes. and all of those type of things. We were very uh, fortunate to uh, benefit from Motor City Match. Um, we did get a Motor City Match grant um, we also uh, have applied for and received other small grants. So there are things out there that are available. You have to take the time to search them out um, and make sure that it is for you a labor of love, mm -hmm. not simply a venture that you are entering into because you want to make money, but it has to be a labor of love. I am, well, I'm personally proud of you guys. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us on this show. And we can say this together that we're going to let's build Detroit. Let's say that together. One, two, three. Let's, let's build, build Detroit. Detroit. Stay tuned for more of Ask the Messengers. Hey, everybody. I want you to tell our viewers who you are and a little bit about your business. My name is David Humphreys, a.k.a. Hump the Grinder. <laughs> and I own Hair Wars, a uh, you know, company we do hair entertainment, something a little different from back in the 80s we started. The, 80, the 80s? That's a long time yeah, ago. 80, officially 85. Actually, we started around 81, 82. But we put 85 as our start time. But we really got serious about doing hair shows and promoting hair stars and hairstylists to, to become entertainers. Like, what motivated you to kind of get in this industry? This is, this is something different. This is, now, this is not the average type of business. What motivated you to do this? Well, I was a DJ. I was giving parties. Mm -hmm. And I was doing a lot of gimmicks. You know, like, just to keep the people occupied, you know, keep, keep it exciting. And I said, one of the gimmicks is going to be hair. We're going to do hair because a lot of hairstyles would come to my parties. And they didn't really have a platform to advertise what they do. So I said, let's give a hair show at the party, stop the party, and just, it was, wasn't structured, it was just ad lib, let's, let's put some hairstyles out there that people see, and, and, you know, get business for the hairstyles, who put these hairstyles together, and it kept going, it was supposed to be like four weeks, it was called Exotic Hair Night, and then we sat, and the list got longer and longer, people said, I want that stage, I got to advertise my hair, this is Detroit, you know, we, we're known for creating hairstyles, and so it ended up blossoming to Hair Wars, and we started doing our weekly shows of clubs for years. So the, the, just the terminology, Hair Wars, can kind of give you the idea that it's a fight, but it's more of a what? Like a it's a showcase. It sounds like a battle. It is a battle. <laughs> I mean, it's still a battle when it's not a prize to be won. The whole thing is these people need to get out there. Mm -hmm. you know, and then the media started you know, finding out about us. Wall Street Journal did a front page story on Hair Wars in 1996. Mm -hmm. And then everybody started coming. Dayline NBC was the first, and then Oprah Winfrey. What? We did Tyra Banks, America's Next Top, Top Model episode. We did about six Ricky Lake shows. So it was, <laughs> you know, the hair stars were rolling. They were the hair celebrities, and a lot of them came from Detroit. Now, this is, like I said before, this is not something that's average. It's not your everyday type of business. What type of obstacles did you have to overcome to start this, to keep this going? Well, getting sponsors, support. Mm -hmm. 
you know, we really didn't get any support from Michigan. Yeah. Detroit was companies from New York and California. They, they seen it, and they were putting some money behind it. So we started touring in '94. We would do ten cities a year for about 15 years. So we and we took Detroit with us everywhere we went. What? We would pick up stylists from other cities, but Detroit was like headlining every show, mm -hmm. and everybody wanted to come out and see Detroit. You know, so. L.A. was Hollywood was our first city, mm. and then we kept going, you know, and we're doing seminars, too. We did 25 cities and seminars, so we were all over the country uh, sharing and teaching people Detroit hairstyles. So yeah, you're, you're putting Detroit on the map. If someone else out there, one of the viewers, wanted to get into something like this, um, what type of advice would you give them? Be prepared, thoroughly prepared, mm -hmm. because a lot of times people say, well, I want to do the show. But they're not, they don't put the time into it mm -hmm. to prepare for it so they can be, you know, something that they can put their stamp on, build their brand. And we help people build brands, you know. We've uh, sent people to all kinds of situations where they can make money, do hair pieces for people like Lady Gaga. You know, we did five pieces for her. People like that. And the whole thing about it, they don't talk about that so much. No. But, but people in the industry, they know mm -hmm. that if you want to get down with hair and you got skills, we can plug you in. Now this this is Detroit. He's <laughs> he's putting Detroit on the map. You heard his nickname, right? Tell me. Uh, well, Hump the Grinder came from. I uh, see. I'm David Humphrey, so I'm from a family of Humps. I'm, I'm, I'm the grinder from DJ. I was a DJ for years. I started Oakland University, and we're doing parties. And then you know we just kept doing parties, and um, and hair ended up inside the party. It's amazing how hair just inter it's just interwoven here in Detroit. It's about fashion. Um, so. You talked about what it took as far as your your mental status, but financially, kind of, what does it take to do something like that? To put on, like, your your hair show? To put on a hair show, probably anywhere from twenty to 40000 to, to give a show, because you have to have a big staff. A lot of people try to do hair shows, and they're not properly staffed. You know, they want to cut corners. I've, I've mentored a lot of people around the country to put on hair shows, because I don't look at it as a competition. It's good to have allies, you know, mm -hmm. we can work with, but... You got to spend the money. If you don't have the money, you got to go get the money. Spend how it. do you get the money? We got to tell them how well, you get well, the money. Well, you put packages together and you show them what they get out of it. Mm -hmm. Because you know, we have like a big email list, thousands mm -hmm. of people who come to the shows over the years. We keep in touch with these people, even though they're not from Detroit, we, you know, different cities. So if you want to sell something, you want to promote something, you can go through the hair circuit because mm -hmm. we deal with a lot of hair salons. And they have clients, barbershops, they have clients. Wow. So when we go even like, like the Wayne County Treasury, they advertise on this show. We take the, the treasure all to the hair salons, you know, so they have to spread the message. Mm -hmm. So if you want to get something out, the hair circuit is probably the best place to do it. Look, thank you so much for joining us here. I want you to tell me, tell the viewers here on the counter through, we're putting Detroit on the map. We're just going to say Detroit is on the map. Are you yeah. ready? Well, this is the hair capital of the world. Hair capital. That's what we need to say. And hair we, capital. We can get you in the hair show. Oh, goodness <laughs> gracious. <laughs> <laughs> On the count of three, we're going to say, we're putting Detroit on the map. On the count of three, are you ready? One, two, three. We're, we're putting, putting Detroit, Detroit on, on the, the map. map. We'll be right back with more of Ask the Messengers.
activists and storytellers who have challenged the status quo and helped us imagine the world we want to see. We also take this moment to recognize Littler's Black employees and allies who contribute to advancing inclusion, equity, and diversity at the firm and across our communities at large. Hello everyone, it's Jacinta Javon in beautiful downtown Detroit. As we celebrate Black History Month, I am out here asking people, what does black history mean to you? Black history in America means to me the exposure of the biggest lie that's been perpetrated on blacks in the world. That we were not indigenous to the land. That's what black history means to me. It represents the fact that black history is a total sham as told by the historians here that put all that nonsense in the book about Christopher Columbus discovering America. Yeah, so black history to me means the acknowledgement of, you know, the contributions of the black community, you know, from our past, what we're doing now to set up for our future. Um, you know, just having representation growing up, just seeing like what my ancestors, have, what my ancestors have done to contribute, is really you know just cool and inspiring. And what I'm doing now to help my black community prosper in the future. Our Black History period means to me um, the contributions of the people that came before me. Uh, when I think about Black History Month, I think about the stories that we told over the years, uh, the art and the culture, that even though we try to boil it down to one month, uh, it's so vast and it encompasses so many areas and countries and walks of life and how our energy is really just a melting pot and how we should celebrate that. That's the best part of being black is, is being a melting pot of energy. To me, it means a time to empower the indigenous people of this land and remind them of their power and uplift. And yeah, time for remembrance about the greatness, you know, and not focus on the negativity that, and the struggle. It means liberation, love, and pride and who you are. Black history is the acknowledgement of ancestors, the people, the culture, and just things that they did or invented, or just the influence that they've had on history up until today. And I definitely feel like it should be more than just one month. Black people should be celebrated for everything they've done all throughout the year. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Well, that concludes this week's episode of Ask the Messengers. We also invite you to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and to subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you would like to help support our show, please feel free to make a donation of any kind by visiting our show website, www.askthemessengers.org. If you prefer to mail donations, please make check or money order payable to Ask the Messengers TV Show and send it to 18400 Schaefer Highway, Detroit, Michigan, 48235. Ask the Messengers is the program that deals with things that help you. Thank you for watching.